Welcome to Annex Love Market Movers, where we bring in market luminaries, experts to help us with the current times. We've done some amazing shows, but today I'm very, very excited to welcome Rajesh Jain. Uh, Rajesh is the founder of Netcore, which is Asia's largest uh, marketing tech provider. Rajesh, welcome to the discussion. Great to be with you, Anne. Awesome. Rajesh, if you can uh, talk a little bit about yourself and Netcore, you've got a, a very, very past and you've been in this industry for a very, very long time. Um, I won't do it justice. So if you can explain to people what Netcore is, what you've done in general, and a little bit about the content and things you share. Sure. Uh, so uh, I'm basically a tech entrepreneur, serial tech entrepreneur. I'd set up India's first internet portals way back about 25 years ago. And then I'd sold the business to SIFI for $100 million in, uh, during the first dot-com boom. We are seeing another one right now uh, in the e-commerce space. And uh, after that, I started Netcore. Uh, so after multiple pivots uh, through its 20-year journey, Netcore has grown to be Asia's largest uh, digital marketing and marketing tech firm. So emails, SMSs, a full marketing stack. And uh, through these years, uh, I also spent some time uh, trying to transform India. So trying to becoming a political and prosperity entrepreneur. Uh, some part of it worked out well, some didn't. Uh, but that was a sort of different detour. I'm now back into Netcore uh, pretty much full time and working to grow us uh, internationally. Uh, so India, Southeast Asia, Middle East and Africa, we already have a presence. Our next uh, focus is really how to grow in the US market. Wonderful and, and great to have you here. And, and so I think my, my first thing is I know, I know you write a lot on your blog. So for people that don't follow Rajesh, you know, you can go to rajeshjain.com. Um, on your blog, you talk a little bit, uh, you know, uh, or actually you talk a lot about customer lifetime value and net predicted revenue. Now, as a marketer, as a former marketer, and, and, and as, a, as someone who talks to marketers a lot, most marketers, if you ask them their metrics, uh, most digital marketers, that is, they will you know, easily say out, here's how much traffic I get if they're online. Here's how much conversion rate I have, whichever channels they get from. And, and here's how much average spend or average order value my customers get. Those are metrics they can kind of very quickly kind of give out. But if you ask them, what's your customer lifetime value? What's your customer lifetime value for your best customers? Uh, and, and how does that tail off? And, and what is your net predicted revenue from this customer cohort? Most marketers, I don't think will have a great answer. Why is that? I think everyone's just focused on the present. Uh, that's number one. Second is very few companies actually have all of the data and the analytical tools on to do the CLV calculation. It's not difficult, but uh, they don't give it as much thought, I think. So there are multiple ways by which CLV can be calculated. And many companies I've seen tend to use a very simplistic model of calculating uh, CLV. They just take the average of transactions over the past few uh, say months or maybe a couple of years. Uh, and then they don't know what to do with the CLV. So when you, when you, when you get a flawed CLV, you're not able to then uh, segment your customers right. And that's where the first challenge lies. The second is when you don't calculate CLV right, you also don't have a forward looking uh, right estimate of what the customers that you have will actually generate in, in future revenue. So I think the key really lies in how do we think about the customer lifetime value? It's a forward looking metric. It's a predictive metric. I think that's number one. And second is how do we use the right data science tools to essentially do the calculation right? And those are the, then the building blocks for calculating NPR and then doing the segmentation right. And that makes sense. And, and you know, uh, one of the things that I think you wrote about that I found very fascinating uh, which, which you shared an article uh, from the Harvard Business Review, which took this concept, which they called CBCV, which is corporate-based um, valuation, essentially for a company, and, or customer-based corporate valuation. Mm -hmm. and, and what that was essentially was, uh, they looked at a, a example of Revolve Clothing, which went public last year and was valued uh, after kind of going you know, public, which you know, it popped by another 100%, almost, or 90%, and, and got to like four to five times their revenue as their valuation. And as an apparel company, that's unheard of. For software, you know, we hear about this all the time, but for apparel, that's unheard of. Um, and the peril that that Harvard Business Review article that I felt was very interesting drew was their customer uh, corporate valuation for that company was based on the customer revenue they were generating, which was very similar to how 
retained revenue is and how much they spend. And so in a software company, you know, you focus on that subscription piece. Uh, and, and Revolve was very much like that in terms of their customer cohorts, thereby demanding that type of evaluation. So I think just proving to your point, you know, NPR and net predicted, uh, you know, revenue is a such an important metric in, in, in terms of lifetime value calculation, which really has a big impact on your, your company's overall valuation, it seems like. In fact, uh, what uh, I think, uh what people should do is actually read about the work by Peter Fader of Wharton. He's got two excellent books on customer centricity. He's also the co-author of the article that you just mentioned in the Jan Feb issue of HPR on uh, CBCV. And I think the two books on customer centricity talk a lot about customer lifetime value, how to calculate it right, because that's really the foundation of everything else that we can do when loyalty and retention, once you get the CLV right. Perfect, perfect. So, so now that we're thinking about getting the, the right mindset for marketers to think about, you know, uh, uh, the net uh, uh, predicted revenue and the customer lifetime value, you have a methodology that you brought together to help customers think about bringing this together. And, and you call it uh, VRM, which is Velvet Rope Marketing. Can you explain what that means in the context of CLV and how does it work? So the framework that I like to use is uh, really, <laughs> excuse me. And the framework that I like to use is really the best customers. That's the top 20%. And then we have uh, the other 80%, the long tail of customers, and then the next customer. So best, rest, and next. Now, the first step in this is really to collect all of the customer data, especially the transaction data, offline, online, whatever it is, and the other uh, information about the customers that you can get, get through the app, uh, uh, on the website, et cetera. Now, once the, the first step is really how do we calculate CLV, right? Uh, like we spoke about. Once you do the CLV calculation, then we are able to do the customer segmentation. So typically businesses will find that the top 10, 20% customers are generating disproportionate value, maybe 50, 60, 70% of revenue. And if they actually get down to calculating profitability, uh, they may find that the profitability of these customers actually could exceed uh, 100% because there are many other customers in the long tail who will be negative contribution because of the cost of acquisition and the cost of servicing. So these customers, the best customers are very, very important for a business. So identifying these customers, retaining them, and then looking for the next customers who are like these customers. That becomes very, very important. So that's really the core of this idea around velvet rope marketing. Think of it like red carpet marketing. Basically, how do you create an amazing experience for the best customers so they never want to leave your brand? That's, I think, the key to growth and profitability, especially in these times. In a way, we think about it, retention now is the new acquisition, given that it's harder to acquire uh, 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 new customers because marketing budgets are getting slashed. And I think uh, your, your excellent uh, point, which you made in one of your recent presentations, that in 2008, uh, a lot of uh, customers actually churned or changed their brands. And that's even therefore more important that companies focus on their best customers at this point of time. Absolutely, 100%. Uh, and we will link to that, that post uh, for 2008 uh, in this video. Thank you for referencing that. Uh, you know, one of the other things I will mention is one of our other discussions we did with Ali Kudby. She's the uh, author of a book on this topic. Uh, she has the very same sort of very similar uh, connotation. She calls it uh, highly loyal, which is really your context, uh, context, of, uh, context of best customers. And so the best uh, rest and next uh, is an amazing context, you know, sort of carrying that forward. The best and rest is your existing customers. And you describe that well. The next is important because your best customers can help you acquire your next customers. Um, you know, we, we call this context internally loyalty and then advocacy. How can you turn your most loyal customers into advocates and help those advocates drive additional revenue through new customers that didn't know about you before. You talk a little bit about that in your sort of stuff around referral marketing. Can you explain this context of how we can acquire the next customers using the best and rest and or the best? So essentially, if you think about it, the best customers, they are the high spenders and they will know people like them. And today because of social networks, our ability to reach people like ourselves, is much greater than it was say probably five or 10 years ago. And in some ways, referral marketing has not evolved as much to account for the fact that the value of the best customers in getting more customers like them 
is significantly greater than what has happened. I think Annex Cloud is a pioneer, of course, in uh, referral marketing. Um, but if you take the larger context I, out here, I think what is it that we can do with by, by creating a specific program for referral marketing just for best customers? And I think there are two interesting ideas which can be applied here. The first is that instead of just compensating uh, uh, customers for their referrals, uh, sometimes you just get a free ride or you get some points. Instead, if you give them a, a value uh, uh, dependent on the lifetime value of the customer they have referred, that makes it very exciting for them. Second is if, if we allow them to create a multi-level tree like uh, the MLM, the uh, Amways and others, uh, Amway and other companies basically do. So now if I refer, say if I refer Al and Al refers Amy, uh, then I can get credit for the spend that Amy is doing. And suddenly the value of the referral program can get multiplied many times because now it's in my interest to actually become a great advocate for the brand because I'm getting something of the lifetime value of the spend. And these thoughts, I think, become very important because the best customers, again, are disproportionately valuable. They can then get you more like them. And therefore, you can create a profits flywheel using this idea of best customers begetting other best customers. Great. And I think some of these concepts I really like, which is, you know, in the direct sales slash MLM space, they've used it for a very long time. But having that tree built under you and, and, and sort of using that part, uh, we, a lot of times we don't count that in the valuation of your best customers. We almost always neglect it. Look at lifetime value, but we never consider the amount that they can get you uh, in terms of next customer. So that's awesome. Uh, and in terms of sort of growth, uh, as you think about it in the current age and in the current challenging times and where we are now, um, and, and, you know, whichever part of the world uh, people might be that are listening to this, uh, it's certainly a challenging time. And it will be for the foreseeable few uh, months or, or even quarters. And, and so what is your advice to marketers uh, to think about as they think about the current times and, and, and they're thinking about, where should we focus on from a marketing perspective, right? And, and, and in traditional, you know, I, I tell people the last decade was the decade of acquisition, uh, which is, you know, focus on the top of the funnel, get as many people as possible. Maybe there's a leaky bucket, but the funnel's so big, it doesn't matter, right? We'll keep going and pumping more in the funnel. Um, the new concept for me is retention is a new acquisition now in the next few years, uh, where we focus on retention being the key metric. But what's your advice on, on for marketers and how should they consider? Because in, in most marketers' mind, they're, play, they're focusing very much on acquisition consistently, but may, maybe that formula works, maybe it doesn't. What, what are your thoughts? I think what marketers need to do at these times is first of all, like you said, focus on retention. And how do you focus on retention? Which customers do you essentially make sure that you never lose? They don't churn away from you. And that is where the ideas of CLV and NPR start coming in that if you can identify correctly the best customers, give them an amazing experience through technology, through a human interface, whichever way it is, so they don't leave you. Because every industry really has a certain set of customers who are disproportionate contributors to profitability uh, for those customers. Like what if you take Apple, what it did with the iPhone, it basically ensured a great product where it sucked away revenues and the profitability from the, in from the industry. Now, every company should be thinking like that, that if I can acquire the best customers in that industry, identify what their lifetime value is, and therefore provide them commensurate services or a pro commensurate ex product experience in there, that really becomes the foundation for building a, a, a continuing, continuous profitable machine in the business. And these, I think, one or two years are, gonna, uh, be, are, are going to be very, very uh, difficult for some companies, but for other companies who can implement these ideas around retention and loyalty, right? I think it's, it's, it's time, they're going to pull away big time and increase the gap between them and competition. So I think the key is focus on best customers, focus on retaining them, and uh, you have a great foundation for the future. Wonderful. And, and I'll leave it with that. I know one of the things that we found in our, in our uh, work is uh, Zappos, which was very, very successful and out of the last recession. During 2008, they were generating 75% of their revenue from existing customers. 
Um, and, and we all know, you know, the founder there, their core focus was service and retaining those customers and keeping customers happy. And that's how important it is. Uh, even in the other sort of surveys and, and sort of analyses we've done, we've seen companies that focus on retention during these recessionary times in the past have come out significantly faster than others. So Rajesh, this is, this is fantastic. Thank you for spending the time with us today. Uh, as a parting thought, if uh, people want to follow your work, because I know you write a lot of great content, um, where do they go uh, check that out? And, and also, if you can tell people uh, if they want to reach out to you or to Netcore, how can they reach you guys? So they can go to my blog, rajeshjain.com. I have an email ID there, or they can just email me at rajesh at netcore, N-E-T-C-O-R-E dot co, C-O dot I-N. Perfect. Wonderful. Rajesh, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much, Al. Bye for now. Bye.